Okay, so let's take a look at question number two here in unit six, lesson five. Um, what we're being asked to do is to figure out which um, sphere would contain the most amount of water. All right, so what we're actually looking at here, um, filled with water, which would need the most amount of water. What we're looking at here is we're looking at calculating volume and comparing the volume of uh, of, of all the uh, the three different objects. And it says here, show calculations to justify your answer. So we don't exactly have um, the dimensions of the sphere given to us um, in the proper way that you would, you would think, especially for B and C. They've given it to us as a circumference and then an area. So how could we go about to look at this question to determine which sphere would require the most amount of water? So I'm just going to go over to the side here and we're going to look at the, the volume expression of a sphere. So we know that we could calculate volume of a sphere by going 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. Okay, so what that expression actually is telling us is that volume, the, the property of volume, is proportional. So I'm going to use a symbol here which means in proportion to the radius cubed. Okay, so that actually, we don't have to worry about the 4 thirds pi in this case. We're just looking to see how the two variables relate to each other. Okay, so this tells us a couple of things. It's directly proportional to um, the value of r. So that means if, the, if r is bigger or r is smaller, the volume is going to expand or contract by a certain amount. Okay, so one way to look at it is that if the value of r is increasing, I'm just going to use the up arrow for increasing, then the volume will also be increasing. And if the, the radius contracts, then the volume will also contract. Okay, so that kind of implies that if we knew what the radius was for each of the questions, we should be able to infer that volume is going to be changing um, by a proportional amount. We don't have to actually know what the amount is, we just need to know whether it's, it's gaining or, or losing. Okay, so just keep that, that kind of thing in mind here. So in question 2a, we have a radius of 2 centimeters. Okay, so we could calculate the volume, but we don't really need to because we're only looking to compare which is, which is going to be the, the sphere that contains the most volume, okay, the most, could contain the most amount of water. So we're just going to leave that, that A for right now. We just know that it's two, it's going to produce a volume of a certain amount, but we're just trying to compare it to something else. In question B, we're given the circumference of the sphere, which is 12 centimeters. So if you think of a sphere, it's like a ball, right? But around the middle of the sphere, you have a circumference, okay? And it doesn't, it could be uh, any direction, but the circumference of that sphere is given to you by a formula. It's the circumference of a circle, which is equal to two pi, two times pi times r. So if we could calculate r in this case, we could then have something to compare it to in case A. All right, so if we rearrange the equation here, I'm just going to move it to the other side here, and we are going to solve for r. This tells us that r is equal to the circumference and divided by 2 pi. We just divide by 2 pi on both sides to get our value. So we do know the circumference value, which is 12, and we know the we're going to divide it by 2 pi. That means the radius of this sphere is given us to it by a value of 6 over pi. So we, that's an exact value. We can estimate what it would be um, numerically, but let's just keep that number um, in, in mind for right now. So it's, it would actually be 6 over pi centimeters would be the units. Okay, so that would be um, what we're carrying here in part B. And then C, we are talking about area. So we're, when we talk about an area measurement for a sphere, we're talking about the surface area. Because the, uh, remember, the, the, the sphere is a three-dimensional object. Um, and not only does it have volume, but it does have a certain amount of surface area. So we need to know what the surface area of a sphere is, and that's equal to 4 pi r squared from our formula sheet, which means that we could calculate r as being the um, square root of the surface area divided by four pi. 
All right, so we would divide by four pi on both sides, but because it's a square term, I'm just gonna shorten it where we take the square root right away. So our number here would be uh, 43 divided by four pi. And then remember, we have to take the square root of that. So all we need to do now here to, to really accurately um, compare this is just compare the values of r. Okay. Um, of r in each case. And the biggest value of r is going to give us the biggest volume. We don't have to calculate it, we just need to know which, which one is bigger because volume is in proportional to it. So a, r is equal to two. Um, b, if we take your calculator and work out what r is, it's going to be six divided by pi, but we'll compare it as a decimal, it's about 1.91, depending on how many decimals you take for accuracy. And then when we do r for part c, 43 divided by four times pi, take the square root of that, we find out r is equal to around 1.85. So which is the biggest radius? I'll just put that in a different color here. Put a box around it. it is part A, the radius of two. So the largest radius, okay, um, will have the largest volume. And we don't have to actually calculate volume to do this question. All we have to do is compare the radius values. And because we know it's proportional to it, we can we can confidently say that the largest radius will also have the largest volume. Okay, so that's a way to think about this question um, where we don't actually have to calculate volume, but we just calculate a property related to volume and then compare that.